Today will be very agricultural. And I, I know so agricultural. I am inspired by the best. Jesus gave lessons that are called parables, and they usually had to do with agriculture because that's what people knew. I also found out that Buddha did the same thing. When I went to Hawaii once, I opened up the drawer, and not only was there a Gideon's Bible, but there was also parables of the Buddha. I know. I know. A little equal opportunity here. And sure enough, the Buddha was talking about animals and planting and things that people knew 2,000 and 2,500 years ago. We do a little less agriculture in Seattle. <laughs> but... I bet you've had a house plant. Anybody never had a house plant? Never, anybody never walked by someone's garden in your yard? I mean, in your neighborhood? See, we all kind of know this is where I'm coming from. I'm trying to meet you where you are. Really? And, <laughs> and today's talk title is All Thoughts Are Seeds. And I realized as soon as I did that, that that's not true. I'll get to that later. I've been enlightened. Not all thoughts are seeds. Other things are seeds. And some seeds work and some seeds don't. And we'll talk about that because I want to move into a state of consciousness where we not only use our left brain, which is uses language and logic and puts things together. I'd also like to access our right brain, which, which conveys and understands information based on pictures, symbols, and uh, it's not only just symbolism, but making things that are invisible, understandable by making them visible. That's why symbolism works. That's why pictures work. That's why parables work. That's why stories work. So we're going to work in both places at the same time. Um, and I just need to say that I, this is really coming home to me because my grandfather was um, probably my first ecologist before I even knew what ecology was. He, he always had land and, um, and, he, and he'd say, if you take care of the land, the land will take care of you. So even though he was a logger, he was a horse logger because the horses would tear up the land less and take out the little trees less. So he'd just take out the big trees, kind of come in and come out, and in two years you'd never know anybody was there. He said, the, the animals on this land were here before we were, so we're going to live in harmony with them. I'm not going to trap them or chase them off. And so when the mountain lions were getting the sheep, he just sold the sheep <laughs> rather than trap and move the mountain lion. He also knew where the bear lived. And the bear, and he said, don't go in that area because if you go in that area and get and spook the horse and you get hurt, I'm going to have to do something about the bear and I don't want to do anything about the bear. So you stay away from the bear. Do you see how wonder? I mean, like, that's the way I was raised. Like everything can live together. I never became a farmer or a rancher like he did. But I, but the lessons still hold true. Nature can teach us if we're willing to learn. Nature will teach us. Judge Thomas Troward was one of, the, one of the major influences for Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of this philosophy. And Judge Thomas Troward said, I only read two things, the Bible and nature. And out of that comes all the way, that became my philosophy and what I teach. So we're going to play around with nature this month. I'm going to play around with what are we planting and how do we cultivate it? When I said that not all seeds, not all thoughts are seeds, I should have said not all thoughts will seed your future because that's actually the topic for the whole month is seeding our future. Not all seeds are going to work. I will take this from Jesus and, and I also know it from how it works is that Jesus said that you can throw around seeds, but some seeds don't take because they land on hard ground. And so if they land on hard ground, they don't have a chance to have moisture, they don't have a chance to put down roots, 
And if it's, if it's hard and they dry out, the birds can eat them, the wind can blow them off. You know, it doesn't necessarily, just because you throw seeds around, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have the crop of what you've been throwing around. Luckily, and sometimes not so luckily. And then <laughs> there are very potent seeds that develop into situations. All the situations you experienced in your life was once planted in the garden of your life. All the things that are cropping up were not perhaps not a seed, but they were things that ended up in the, in the garden of your life. So help me out here. I'd like you to play a game with me. So I would love for you to imagine, just in, in your own imagination, imagine yourself as a house. Be any kind of house you want to be. Big house, little house. The house in dream work, the house in some psychologies, the house in the Bible. All the houses, when they said house, they meant the individual consciousness. In the Bible, it says a house divided must fall because how many of you have been of two minds? And like You go there and you go there and you don't get anywhere. And you just fall. So the house is your consciousness. Now imagine you're surrounded by a yard and a garden. And in some places the garden is flourishing. In some places the garden needs a lot of work. In some, garden, some places you just gave up and created a patio. Just covered it up. Some places have trees that give you shade. And some places are got too much sun and everything is drying out. So just imagine what your garden looks like, and then we're going to play around with that garden as I, as I do the talk. But imagine the garden. Let, and what you're doing is you're letting your subjective mind reveal to you what your life looks like in a symbol. Let's dive in. Now, not everything was from a seed. So I realized when I said seeding your future, not everything comes from a seed. You also have things in your garden that came from a bulb or a spore. We live on a farm. We got spores. A little bit of sunshine after a rain and we got big mushrooms, little mushrooms, fluorescent mushrooms. We have all sorts of mushrooms everywhere. Everywhere a horse has been. There's a mushroom. Some of them are huge. Mushrooms. Some of the things in this garden that you have creeped in over the fence or through the fence from somebody else's yard. You didn't, you didn't want that in there, but it's just like seeking expression. It wants to spread like gossip. And it came in. Some of them, some of them are even saplings that came underneath the fence and and the and the the root wanted to express itself in a new way so it sent up a sapling and so it, and then it starts to grow and you're going where'd that tree come from i didn't plant that tree i didn't even want that tree in fact it's not a tree it's a bush and then some of us have succumbed to our neighbor's bamboo <laughs> how many of you've tried to control bamboo you better really know what you're doing with bamboo there be better be a really deep ground fence or not only will you have bamboo all over your yard where you don't want it the neighbors will start to complain I mean the bamboo it's it's God's vigorousness showing up in form which is really great if you want it in a place but not if you want it in your window, right? So think of all the things that you have in your yard. It's more than what you planted. It's what's also what sort of, sort of shows up. Now, let's get into the lesson of this. We all live in circumstances that we didn't necessarily consciously agree to. We sometimes, we live with things we didn't consciously sign up for. Nobody consciously signs up for, you know what? I hope nobody likes me today. <laughs> I hope it's really hard. Boy, I want, I just want a bummer of a day. 
I just want bummer after bummer after bummer. And then I'll, you know, nobody signs up for that. Nor do you, do you wake up and go, whoa, I hope I feel poor again. Yeah. Let's just see which bill I can't, you know, I can't pay. This will be fun. Nobody does that. And yet some people experience that. Why? It's not that you planted the seed. Please, God, let me be poor for the rest of my life. Nobody does that. Please, God, let me have one trouble after another. Nobody does that. But it doesn't mean that it's not showing up. Now, how does that happen? First of all, some seeds were planted in you a long time ago. You were unconscious of them. And they landed in fertile soil. For instance, one of the things that was planted in my soul from a very early age by all the women in my family was, if you want to get ahead, marry the right guy. Because at my age, oh, the other thing I was planted in my soul by my mother and my aunt and my father is get something that you can depend on, become a secretary or a bookkeeper, and then work for the government so that you will have a secure living and then when you retire you'll have it made and it, i didn't buy that one it landed on very hard ground very hard ground bugs ate it i mean birds flew off with those ideas but the one that landed was if you want to get ahead you've got to marry the right guy and so i've always wanted to get ahead so my first husband, I had, um, I had, <laughs> I'd become a Mormon after being a born again evangelical. <sighs> the days of our lives, <laughs> the, the, the beliefs of the minister. <sighs> I became a Mormon because they had a more gentle version of, of heaven than evangelicals and my God was good. So I thought, Oh, this is better. They got three levels of heaven. This is perfect. I'm all for it. Then I join, I become a Mormon and I find out that me as a woman can only go as far as my husband into heaven. So if he doesn't do well, I don't do well. So I better find somebody that's going to do well. So I'm looking around and I'm not looking for somebody that I'm attracted to. I'm not looking to somebody that I might love and like. I'm not looking at somebody that might be sexy. I'm looking at somebody. I'm not even, I don't even care if we have the same interests. I want to know who's bishop material. <laughs> I want bishop material. I, I, let's stake president, maybe up an, an apostle. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. And I found him. You know what? Didn't last long. Why? Because we didn't like each other much. We had nothing in common except the church. And frankly, I discovered within myself that if God only liked me for who I married, I don't want that God anyway. So I was out of there. But you see how that seed got planted? I didn't wake up some day and say, ooh, let's marry somebody you don't even like. I said, that's a plan. But see, the seed was there. And I, at the time, wasn't conscious enough to toss it out. How many, now think about it. In that garden, what's flourishing in your garden that you didn't plant? You didn't pick it, but you didn't tear it out. You didn't tear it out. And then there's the vines and the other stuff that comes in from the neighbors. Now, I call that, I call that being influenced by society. Stuff just comes through and it starts to, you know, like the, the vine will look, the vine looks innocent, but then it gets on the ground and before you know it, it starts sprouting down roots and then it's its own plant. And the sapling, when it comes up from a root, it looks like, oh, it's just a little thing. <laughs> it becomes a tree. Then you got to knock it down. Then you got to feel bad because you're killing a tree. We, we're told by society how to interact with others. We, we are told by society who the others are. 
we're told by society what God thinks. <laughs> I, I can't even say that without laughing because I know that what, what God says, they think I think that. <laughs> we don't know what God thinks. I mean, how, really, how, how would the finite mind know what the infinite thinks? It even says in the Bible, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Get over yourself. The get over yourself was, Kathy Ann added that, but still. My ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. We're told about genders. I mean, this is kind of a big deal right now. Like genders, like we were told, you know, I grew up, there were two genders. I, I, now there's a bunch of genders. This is kind of exciting. You know, when I grew up, there was only two notes. Now we have an orchestra. You could, you know, like all this diversity and this expression, man, that becomes, it could become a musical. Genders, the musical. <laughs> Not really. But you see, we, some people aren't getting the planting that there's more than one way or two ways for God to express. We don't have to let that grow up in our garden, if that makes any sense. <sighs> lesson number two, first lesson, you didn't necessarily plant or cultivate everything that you're living with, but it does mean that you are responsible once you start seeing it grow, which leads me to the next place. You can design the life you want anytime by taking that garden that you envisioned and re-landscaping it in your head. Re-landscaping it in your head. I actually created a, a class called self-mastery and I created it just for this purpose. For people to understand the, the intelligence in between the thoughts that they're thinking so that they can re-choose their thoughts. Because thoughts accepted will generate an experience. Even a weed is a thought. Because when my, when the females of my life told me that if you want to get ahead, you've got to marry the right guy, I took it in. I'm responsible not for thinking it or, or being told it. I'm responsible for cultivating it. I cultivated it. Now, Looking at the garden and re and re deciding how you want to re landscape is probably going to take more than an afternoon, but I'm going to give you an afternoon's assignment later and I hope you take it. I'll, I'll give you an example of redesigning my life. This happened in one of my first few years here at, at in Seattle and I had an epiphany. Uh, the epiphany happened in Egypt at the at the Holy of Holies, um, at the tem uh, Temple of Isis, but that doesn't matter where it happened. I'm just saying it happened. And what I, under I came to understand what was going on in my life. Because as soon as I got to Seattle, I noticed that people were disapproving of what I did. Now, and I kind of understood that. When somebody new shows up, the people that are there, they have like, like six months of honeymoon, Nice to know you. Now, don't do it that way. We did it this way. We think we should continue to do it that way. And I didn't do it that way. So I was wrong. I was wrong by the board of trustees. I was wrong by most of the staff. I was wrong. I was wrong by the people that were leaving in droves. Um, well, not droves. It was a trickle, but still. <laughs> still, it seemed like a drove. <laughs> How many of you, if somebody doesn't like you, they go, people don't like me. There's one. You know, so I'm, I know I'm exaggerating, but it felt that way. And I'll tell you what was the, what was the, kid, oh, oh, and the husband at the time, who Janet might remember, the husband at the time was always evaluating how I could be a better minister. And after I'd give a talk, he would give feedback that went on and on and on about how it could have been much better. From your husband. I mean, I love it. All the eyes are open. Like, oh, that's not the basis of a good relationship. No. But anyway, so 
So I had all of this going on. And the piece de resistance was when somebody was hired to help us with education. And she was telling me that I was doing all the classes wrong and charging the wrong amount. And she just got there. Like what? So I go to Egypt and I have this epiphany and I saw like old clothing I was wearing. I'm wrong. I saw that I wore. I'm wrong. I broadcast. I'm wrong. And when, and I had this opportunity to just say, no, that's not part of me. This is not who I am. That's something I accepted. I'm not sure where I got it. And I kind of like tore off the clothing, but I was going to, if I'm going to use the, the garden metaphor, I'm going to say that I ripped out those berry vines and blackberry bushes in one fell swoop. And I was amazed how clean it felt. And I remember thinking, and it came to be true. Everybody that wants to make me wrong will now probably be leaving because I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not wrong. I'm created by God. I do things differently, but the way that I do them is perfect for me as an individual. And guess what? It all cleared up. It all cleared up. Now, I encourage you to look at your garden again, the garden of your life, and find the places that aren't flourishing. Maybe you have a couple of tulips coming up, but you planted 150, which by the way, really happened at my house. We have a lot of fir trees and fir trees take a lot of nourishment. And so I'll plant things and they just don't come up. What really flourishes is moss and ferns. I have lots of moss and ferns. They're really, it's hard to get excited about the moss, but still the moss is on everything, including rocks. It's just really lovely. Anyway, the bulbs I planted didn't come up. So if where are the areas of your life though, that you're planting and planting, but they're not flourishing. If you go, if you hope, if you go over into that garden in your mind this afternoon and you go into the soil, you will find the thought that's keeping things from coming up because it is nature's it is nature's nature to grow and when something that you have planted that is that is expresses more life and harms no one including yourself if you've been planting it and it's not flourishing there's something in the soil that's keeping it from flourishing and that that which is keeping you from flourishing is a thought. So remove the thought and see what happens. Just remove it. And I know, I know it sounds, just remove it. Actually, you can just remove it. But first you have to see it. First you have to even know that it might be there. That's what my job is. My job is to point, to you, point out to you that if something that you're planting isn't growing, that's not natural. But it's very normal because people try to plant things in soil of, in the soil of their mind where something else is working. Remove the something else and the plants spring up naturally. Number three, lesson number three. Don't wait to have a clean slate or a totally vacant mind before you start planting the experiences you desire. <laughs> I think I'm ready. I have no more past the hots. No, stop that. Don't go there. This is where you consciously choose the thoughts you want in the area that you want them. An example. I, I'm going to put it into this in a minute, but I, I, it's time to re it's time to redecorate my home. We've lived there for about 18 years and I brought in a whole bunch of hodgepodge furniture. I used to live in, in uh, pioneer square. I had a lot of Asian stuff. Well, a Asian barn just, just doesn't, <laughs> you know, ranchette goes to Asia. Just, <laughs> it's just not working. So I'm thinking I want to redo things and I could plant that thought and I'm going to plant that thought and I have to continually plant the thought, but I can't let the 
the ideas that it's going to be too costly and too expensive, like too costly and expensive is the same thing, too messy and take too long, get in my way. Does that make sense? And so it's like I keep planting while I keep removing the idea that I can't do it. All the reasons I can't do it, I keep removing that and keep planting the seeds. Planting the seeds, planting the seeds. Which leads me to the next thing. If you want to really plant a seed so it grows, you're going to have to do a little work. Don't just throw it out there like, like chickens, chicken seeds, you know. It's like you've got to dig the hole and put the seed in and cover it up. So that it has a place to root. Now, what does that mean? It means that some of us just think we can throw some thoughts out there. No, you also have to throw some action out there. It's a thought plus an action that's going to get the seed really going. Actions cultivate seeds as well. They let the seed, they let, they, they protect the seed. They're, they're telling your mind you're really serious. So if I'm really going to redecorate, it means that I also have to do some research. Like, what, how would I like to decorate? What colors would I like to have? What, what speaks to me? How much would it cost? To see, like, I can't just like wish, wish, wish. I also have to do, do, do. Too many people just wish. If you want to be healthier, get a checkup. If you want something in your life, do you have a savings account for it? I used to say this to people. I'm not sure who it applies to here. If you want to get married, date. Please date. No, really. I used to have people that say, I want to find somebody. Who are you dating? You got, you got to get yourself in the game. You have to do something. Give, give the seed some ground for goodness sakes. <laughs> so here's your assignments, my dears. On this, on one level, I'd like you to work with your, with your imagination. I'd like you to work with your inner vision. I'd like for you to go home and truly plot out your life as a garden. This area is flourishing. This area, not so much. This area, I totally gave up on and created a patio. This area, mm, I'm not paying attention to it. I think if I look back there, there's probably blackberries. Not my fault. It's the neighbors. Look at your life as a garden and decide what area of your life you want to redesign. What are you going to have to pull out? And what do you want to plant? And then I'd like you to create the experience you'll have when you have redesigned your garden and put it on this whatever you got. I, some people got bumblebees. Some people got pieces of paper. I got a butterfly. All of this, by the way, is seed paper and will grow into wildflowers. Ooh, now I'm interested. Put on here the experience you'll have when the, your garden has been redesigned in certain areas. For instance, what I will have in my home if I redesign it and have it match living on a ranchette is harmony. I will keep the Buddhas. I have Buddhas everywhere. But they'll be barn Buddhas. <laughs> so harmony. What, will, what is the essence that you will experience and plant that plant because that's important. How many of you have ever gotten what you wanted, but you didn't get the experience you wanted anyway? Kind of like I, when I got married my first time, I got the husband. I didn't get an experience of love, commitment, security, partnership. That doesn't come with somebody that might be a future Bishop comes, comes from other things. Anyway, I was young. So plant, plant this in soil, either in your garden, in a pot, or if you don't have a garden in a pot, a little piece of 
uh, ground that you see somewhere, plant it deep because it's going to come up as a wildflower. So you're watching this grow while you're letting that experience grow within you. So the inner becomes the outer. In the Gospel of uh, Thomas, it says, When the inner becomes the outer and the two have become one, then you shall know heaven. So this is your opportunity, my dears. So plant this. Arrange your garden. Landscape it the way you want. And then start the process of bringing, about that, of bringing that about in your own life. Let's pray. Ah, what a good day. What a good day. Good day. And so I just give thanks for April. I give thanks for, for all of us turning our attention to the earth. Turning our attention to that which supports us, which is the earth. The earth below and the heavens above, that which is spiritual and that which is material are, are one and it all supports us as we allow ourselves to be supported. I give thanks that it is the Holy Spirit that will instruct us in the re-landscaping of our life, showing us what can improve and what we can plant and what we need to just dig out. I'm so grateful that all of this is happening for our benefit, that we may live once again in Eden, a beautiful paradise of heavenly experiences here on earth, now and forever. And so it is.